Good morning, everybody. This is Ordinary Differential Equations, our second uh, class meeting. Um, are there any questions about the course, about anything in chapter one, which is completely introductory? Um, and then we'll start to talk about chapter two, which is the first serious um, subject on the syllabus. So again, I had posted the lecture on uh, YouTube to cover section 2.1. And I'll say a few more words about it right now, maybe work a couple of problems. Um, but really the main purpose of these Zoom classes is for you to ask me questions about homework problems, problems in the text and so forth. Okay. All right. So, in that case, let's begin. So, you have the book, obviously, because it's free and I posted the entire book on Blackboard. And I want to talk about, so this is, let me uh, turn on this document. Oh. There we are. So ordinary differential equations, section 2.1 which is on first order linear equations. Linear first order equations. First order means the highest derivative is the first derivative. So there's no second or higher derivative. And yeah, I think that's a little bit easier to read. Um, so, and linear, so a first order equation, the general form will be y prime, y is the unknown function, is some function of x and y. So this can be linear or nonlinear, but if it's linear, then the function <clears throat> f of x, y is really um, something simple that can be rearranged if you, in the form y prime plus some function of x times y equals f of x. So the unknown function is y, and the variable can be x or t. Here, we're going to use the variable x. So linear differential equation of the first order is an equation that can be written in this form. You don't have any higher derivative than the first. You don't have any power of y greater than the first or any power of y prime greater than the first. And you don't even have a y times y prime term. So it's just something that looks like this. And the, this equation is homogeneous if the right-hand side is zero. And it's non-homogeneous if the right-hand side is not zero. And there is a method to solve all homogeneous and non-homogeneous differential equations. 
So let's start with the homogeneous case. y prime plus p of x y equals zero. And we're going to reduce this to a problem in calculus. So I write this as y prime equals minus p of x times y. And I want to suppose that y of x is not zero on some open interval from A to B. That just means if it's not zero, I can divide by it. So I get Y prime over Y is minus P of X. And I want to also assume that P of X is continuous on the same open interval. And when you write the equation in this form, so this is a function of x and this is a function of x. And they're continuous, p of x is continuous. So you can integrate. You get the integral of y prime over y dx is minus the integral of p of x dx. And since you're required to have taken three semesters of calculus in order to take ordinary differential equations, you know that this integral is the natural log of y prime over y. And this integral, well, whatever it is, I'll just call it p of x. So capital P of x is an antiderivative or an integral of lowercase p of x. So if you exponentiate absolute value of y prime over y is, oh, sorry, yes, um, plus a constant. Okay. p of x is some fixed antiderivative, and this is minus p of x plus a constant. So you get e let me call this k, e to the minus p of x plus k, which is e to the minus p of x times e to the k. Now, the exponential function is never zero, right? You know, e to the x is always strictly positive. And if y is different from zero on this interval, and it has to be continuous because it's differentiable, it's either always positive or always negative. So y prime over y, you take away the absolute value signs, is plus or minus, sorry, this is the, the integral of y prime over y is the log of absolute value of y. This is just absolute value of y, it's easy. So let me just write that on a clean piece of paper so I have a little bit more room. So we started with the differential equation y prime plus p of x y equals zero. We rewrote that in the form y prime over y is minus p of x. When we integrate, we get the log of the absolute value of y is minus the integral of p of x dx, which is minus capital P of x plus some constant k, where capital P is the integral of p of x, the antiderivative. So that means the absolute value of y, if we exponentiate, is e to the k, e to the minus p of x. So y is plus or minus e to the k, e to the minus p of x. It's the plus sign if y is positive and the minus sign if y is negative. So I can just call this c. So this is c, some constant times e to the minus p of x. So what we just proved is in some sense our first simple theorem, which says that 
y prime plus p of x y equals zero has solution y equals c e to the minus p of x for any constant c. So this constant c is called a parameter and we have one parameter here, it's one constant c. This is a one parameter family of solutions. So, let's just take the simplest example that there exists in the universe. So A is just a number. If we have Y prime plus AY equals zero, then my function P of X is equal to A. And my function capital P of X, which is the antiderivative of A DX, just AX. So our solution is y equals c e to the minus ax for any c. Okay. Any questions about this? So, Suppose we were given the problem, solve the differential equation, x, y prime plus y equals zero. Well, you can say, first of all, it's not in the right form because in the right form, the coefficient of y prime is one, but for x either from zero to infinity or x from minus infinity to zero, not including zero, x is different from zero, you can divide by it. So this is the same as the equation y prime plus one over x y equals zero. Right? I just divide by x. So if you're looking at an equation of the form y prime plus p of x times y equals zero, here p of x is one over x. And capital P of x, which is the integral of one over x dx, is log x. The resolution of this differential equation is y equals c e to the p of x, e to the oh. minus p of x, e to the minus log x, yeah, C e to the minus log x. What is e to the minus log x? It's one over x. This is like c e to the e to the log x to the minus one. E to the log x is x. C x to the minus one or c over x. So for this differential equation, the solution is any constant c divided by x. And you should always check. So let's check. Suppose we have y equals c over x, then y prime is minus c over x squared. So x y prime multiplied by x is minus c over x. The c over x is y, that's minus y. So x y prime plus y equals zero, and then checks. Any questions about this? This is the basic technique for solving a homogeneous linear equation.
And there are several homework problems to solve equations of this type. All right, so let's make it more interesting. Oh, and then I may have one other point. Um, we have what are called initial value problems. So we wanna find the solution of the equation that satisfies some particular value for some value of X. So suppose we want a solution of this differential equation, which satisfies the initial condi condition that when X is equal to one, Y is equal to three. So our general solution is Y equals C over X. If you let X equal to one, this is C. And when X equals one, Y is supposed to equal three. So C is equal to three. So if we let C equal three, Y equals three over X is the unique solution to this differential equation satisfying this initial value condition. Any questions about any of this? All right. Well, let's go to the general first order equation, the non-homogeneous case. So this is the yes, linear non-homogeneous. first order differential equation. So this is of the form y prime plus p of x y equals f of x, where f of x is not zero. So there are many methods to obtain, there's only one general solution, but there are many methods to obtain it and the very nice method that's used in our textbook is called the method of variation of parameters. So what we do is look at the complementary equation. Which is our differential equation if we replace the right hand side by zero. Y prime plus P of X Y equals zero. So this is the complementary equation. And we just learned how to solve this. So that Y1 be a solution, any solution. Of this equation. Right, so Y1 prime plus P of X, Y1 equals zero. So we solve the homogeneous equation, which is the complementary equation to the equation we really are interested in. And then let's try the following. So this is kind of like an experiment. Suppose we, we want to look for a solution I'll call this equation star. Let's look for a solution y of the form y equals some function u times this function that we have y1 prime. All right. So such a solution has to satisfy this equation. So if y is u y one prime, y if y is u y one, y prime when you differentiate a product. So this is calc one. 
you have the derivative of u times y1 plus u times the derivative of y1 prime. So let's plug that into our equation. y prime plus p of x y is going to be equal to u prime y1 plus u y1 prime plus p of x times y, which is u y1. If we rearrange that, let's see, what do we get? We have u y1 prime plus these two terms. Sorry, I want to write this. This is u prime y1 u prime y1 plus u y1 prime plus p of x u y1. This is u prime y1. I can factor a u out of these terms plus u times y1 prime plus p of x y1. But y1 was the solution of the complementary equation. y1 prime plus p of x y1 is zero. So this term is zero, disappears. We simply get u prime y1. And this is all supposed to equal f of x. So the function u prime has to satisfy the equation u prime is f of x over y1 which means u is the integral of f of x over y1 plus a constant. So if we can do this integral, we can find u we found y1, and the product u times y1 is equal to y. So that's a method to solve the, the non-homogeneous first order linear differential equation. And that may do uh, some examples, and I'll just pick some examples in the text. So when you're studying the book, it's easier to follow. This is example 2.1.5. To find the general solution of the differential equation y prime plus 2y equals x cubed e to the minus 2x. We want to find every function y differentiable whose derivative and y satisfy this equation. So what is the complementary equation? That's when you get, when you replace the right-hand side by zero, y prime plus two y equals zero. And we know a solution of that y one is e to the minus two x. So if we let y equal u y one, or u e to the minus two x. Right? Y prime plus two y, when you differentiate u e to the minus two x, you get u prime e to the minus two x minus two u e to the minus two x plus 2y, which is plus 2u, e to the minus 2x. You can see right away, these cancel, right? minus plus. This is u prime e to the minus 2x. And that's supposed to equal f of x. This is my f of x. Equals x cubed e to the minus 2x. 
So you cancel the e to the minus two x's, you get u prime is x cubed, which means u is the integral of x cubed dx, which is a fourth x to the fourth plus a constant. So y, which is u y one, that's one fourth x to the fourth plus a constant, that's u, times y one, which is e to the minus two x. And that's the general solution. For any constant c. And again, you can check by differentiating. For different values of C, what do these curves look like? Well, there's a very nice picture in the book about this. Let me just show you right here. So let me... Go to my screen share if I can. Oh, I know what I have to do. Screen share. And I want to look at page 36. So here's the differential equation we just solved. Y prime plus two Y equals X squared E to the minus two X. And using the method of variation of parameters, we found that every solution of the equation is of this form for some number C. So any choice of the parameter C gives a solution and once you fix C, you get an equation. Y is some function of X, it has a curve. And these are the integral curves. These are solutions of this equation. So the solution of this differential equation is for different values of C, they all look like this. And you can also notice if you look at this, that as X goes to infinity, e to the minus 2x goes to 0, x to the fourth goes to infinity, but x to the minus 2, e to the minus 2x goes to 0 much faster than x to the fourth goes to infinity. So this right-hand side goes to 0. So as x gets larger, no matter what value of c you pick, you will observe that these curves always are approaching 0 asymptotically. That's nice. Right. Any questions about this? So this is really a fundamental piece of differential equations. It's really the first topic in the course um, in, in solving a linear first order equation. And this really teaches us how to solve every single one of them. So let me do another example. This is example two point one point six. Y prime plus the cotangent of x times y equals x times the cosecant of x. So fortunately, after you've taken three semesters of calculus, you have no problem with trigonometric functions. 
cosecant is one over the sine, the cotangent is one over the tangent or the cosine over the sine. We want to find the general solution of this equation. And then we also want to solve the initial value problem, which is to find the solution where when x is equal to pi over two, y at pi over two is equal to one. So this is our initial condition that we want to satisfy. So what is the complementary equation? It's y prime plus cotangent x times y equals zero or y prime over y equals minus the cotangent of x, which is minus cosine x over sine x. And of course, this only makes sense on an interval where the sine of x is different from zero. So, Now, sine of x is zero at multiples of pi. So you can say x is, for example, restricted to the open interval from zero to pi. Or more generally, for any number r, x is from r times pi to r plus one times pi. So this is just, here's r pi, here's r plus one times pi. This is some interval of length pi on the real line. And in this open interval, the sine of x is non-zero and the cotangent is non-zero. So this is all perfectly legitimate. So if we integrate on one of these intervals, the integral of y prime over y dx is minus the integral of the cotangent of x dx or minus the integral of cosine x over sine x dx. The integral of y prime over y is the log of the absolute value of y. And the integral of minus cosine over sine is minus the log of the absolute value of the sine of x plus a constant. But a particular, but you take the constant equal to zero. So a solution y1 of this complementary equation satisfies, let's say if you exponentiate, um, absolute value of y is one over sine x. So in particular, if you take y to be positive and sine x to be, let's say, between zero and pi, you can choose y1 to be one over sine x. Okay. So one, one function that satisfies the complementary equation is y1 equals one over sine x. And you can check. Y1 prime was the derivative of one over sine x minus one over sine squared x times the derivative of the sine, which is cosine x. So this is minus cosine x over sine x times one over sine x. Cosine over sine is cotangent, and one over sine is y1. So that's exactly this equation. So let's see what we have accomplished so far. We have the differential equation y prime plus cotangent x y equals x cosecant x. 
if we take the complementary equation, y prime plus cotangent x times y equals zero, we get a solution. One solution is y prime, y1 is one over sine x. So we want to let u be the unknown function. And y is going to be u times y1, or u over sine of x. So we want to find a function u such that u over sine x satisfies our differential equation. So let's differentiate. y prime is the derivative of u over sine x. We use the quotient rule, sine squared x. The derivative of u times sine x plus u times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. So this is u prime over sine x plus u cosine x over sine squared x. So y prime plus cotangent x times y, y prime is u prime over sine x plus u cosine x over sine squared x plus cotangent x times y, which is u over sine x. I'm sorry. Uh, when I differentiate y by the quotient rule, it's u prime times sine x minus u cosine x. So it's always good to get things right. Let's see. Um, u prime over sine x minus u. This is cosine x over sine x, which is cotangent x times one over sine x. So this term and this term cancel. We just get u prime over sine x. And this is supposed to equal x cosecant x. And cosecant is one over the sine. So we have u prime over sine x equals x over sine x, which means u prime equals x. And what's the antiderivative of x? A half x squared plus a constant. So u is a half x squared plus a constant. So y, which is u over sine x, that's one over sine x times a half x squared plus a constant. So this is x squared over two sine x plus c over sine x. This is the general solution of the differential equation. And we wanted a solution that satisfies the initial condition that y, when x equals pi over two, is equal to one. So if you plug pi over two in for x, what do we get? We get pi over two squared over two times the sine of pi over two plus c over the sine of pi over two equals one. When x is pi over two, y is one. 
And you learned in preschool that the sine of pi over two is one. So this says that pi squared over four over two, which is pi squared over eight, plus c equals one. So c is one minus pi squared over eight. So you plug that in for c, and we have the particular solution of the differential equation. It satisfies the initial condition. And that's what it is. So there should be one thing you observe in all this, which is you really have to know calculus, right? I mean, if you didn't learn how to integrate in Calc 1 and 2, um, you have to go back and review all the techniques of integration. When you're doing your homework, of course, you have the advantage that if you have maple and know how to use it, you can always use maple to compute integrals for you. But when you take the exams, um, you cannot use a computer or a calculator. You really have to know how to do integration. So that is the story here. Any questions about this? Again, uh, this is really just a review of the lecture that I had already posted on YouTube. And um, So let me just summarize this method of variation of parameters. And if there are no questions, then we will stop for the day. So the general problem is to solve the first order equation y prime plus p of x y equals f of x. So the first step. Find a function y1 prime, find a function y1 that satisfies or such that it's a solution of the non homogeneous equation, the complementary equation, y prime plus p of xy equals zero. Then we're going to look for a solution of the form u times y1 to some function u. And if you plug this into the equation, after some cancellation, you get u prime y1 equals f of x. So u prime is f of x over y1. This has to be in, on an interval where y1 is different from zero. And then you integrate to find u. And then y equal uy1 is the solution. Okay, well, that's the secret of the linear first order differential equation. So are there any questions about this or have you started the homework and do you have any questions about the homework? The first homework I think is due on Tuesday. Okay. If there are no questions, then we are done for the morning.
And over the weekend, I will post lectures um, covering the next couple of sections of the text, the next topic that we do. So we're de we've dealt with first order linear equations. But of course, the typical equation is not necessarily linear, even if it's a first order. And we have to begin to solve nonlinear equations. Uh, there's one class of nonlinear equations that you might have seen in Calc 2, which are called separable. And section 2.2 .2 is on separable ordinary differential equations. So I will post some lectures on that over the weekend and they'll be available on YouTube. Okay. All right. If there are no questions, then we are done for the morning. Take care all, bye-bye. Uh, professor. Yes. Uh, before you go, you know the homework questions for direction field? Yeah, that's just, I mean, if you have trouble with those, don't worry about it because they're really hard to try to do by hand. Um, so that's hard to do by hand. The ones I assigned, you have the direction field already drawn in the text. And you can then just sort of, if you can make a copy of it, you can sketch it out by hand, sketch out what the direction, what the integral curves would look like. If you can't, uh, I'm not going to subtract anything from your homework grade if okay. you haven't been able to do those problems. Okay. I mean, just to get some geometrical sense of what the shapes of solutions of differential equations look like. Uh, any other question? Okay. Be well, well. Bye bye.